Reggie, can we talk about the uh, the DVD and the VHS that came out in um, 99, Death Row Uncut? People call it the red tape because the VHS tape was a red tape. But any stories or memories from um, when you guys were planning or putting that together? Oh, that DVD was done because, in our mind, we was one of the first trailblazers in putting DVDs out. Master P was doing stuff on DVDs, but he was mainly putting out him and DJ Poole and all of them and Mac, uh, E-40 and all of them for Boys from the Bay, they were putting out DVDs about uh, the hood, just hood stories. Quick, little, cheap, $200,000, $250,000 projects. Uh, just throwing on the streets and throwing on DVDs. Because DVDs were being popular. You know, you still had the VHS tapes around, uh, but DVDs was coming out. That's why I was instrumental in putting uh, Murder Was the Case out on DVD. That's all under Reggie Watch. Now I'll get back to John question. The DVD. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So Death Row DVD Uncut was just a whole bunch of our music put in where I messed up at, wished I could have got, wished I would have been smarter and had more time to do and find, but I didn't put the dirty scenes in there. You know, like when the chick ran out, it was blurred out with the, you know, with her titty showing and all that stuff. Little stuff like that, I wish I would have had those videos and, and put stuff out there, the dirty versions out. Uh, put Dre, uh, some bunch of uh, drag queens sitting in the uh, jacuzzi, uh, and that was Suge's idea. You know, him, him sitting up at the prison talking and talking about Dre and, and, and all of that being gay and all of that stuff. We was haters. We were dissing at the time. So yeah, we did that on the uncut. Um, but the most important thing that I want to tell y'all about, <laughs> show y'all how white boys are. <laughs> so, you know, y'all, you know who we was hating then. We was haters. We was hating Jimmy Ivy, Dr. Dre, and Snoop. They didn't have stuff on, on, online like they do now, show you where niggas live and all of that. But Reggie had ways to do that. Reggie found out where each one of those motherfuckers live. I had the caravan drive and gave y'all directions to all three of the houses. So I go and this DVD out. Now, if y'all know the, the, the game or know anything about the game, those retailers have relationships with Interscope and Universal. So we did a big old party and uh, we had a suite at, at, you know, the Staples Center that just got built. And Death Row had a suite there. And, and I invited all the retail people down to the Staples Center, took them to dinner, had a little screening room at the at Staples Center, and showed them the DVD. They all loved it. Oh, man, we loved it. But we had a rat among us. Had a rat among us. So y'all be able to buy this in two weeks. Going to be coming for sale for two weeks. Get y'all retail orders ready. It was done by with Ventura Distribution. So then, after we showed them that, we took them upstairs, got them to watch the Lakers uh, game. Uh, this is like 2000, this is when they on their championship role. They all sat in the suite and, and watched the game. That's when I, Spoo Riley had to learn that your boy Reggie had hands too. When I had that nigga got a little drunk, drinking too much. I had to put that nigga in the head a lot. But that's my nigga Poo. Shout out Poo. But, Anybody that was around know that happened. So, uh, back on track. So now I get a phone call the next day. Reggie, 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 how you doing this to me? How you doing this to me? What you talking about, Jimmy? You know what you did. No, I don't, Jimmy. I don't know what you're talking about. I hear you got a DVD coming out, about to hit the stores. And... And you got my house and picture of my wife standing in the driveway and all of that. Oh, Jimmy. Why are you doing this to me, Reggie? Please don't do that. Don't put it out. Man, Jimmy, I already got about $500,000 worth of orders. Reggie, I'll send you the $500,000. Please. I don't care about Dre. I don't care about Snoop Address. Just please take my house out of there. Sure. Yeah, man. Jimmy Tripper, 
Fuck that, man. Come on, shit. He gonna give us five hundred thousand dollars. That nigga better have five hundred thousand dollars wired to the car by tomorrow, and you can do it. Thanks, shit. All right, Jimmy, you wire five hundred thousand dollars by tomorrow. I won't put your house out. You want Snoop and Dre house? I don't care about them. Well, you can pay another five hundred thousand. I'll take theirs out. Oh, fuck that. You just take my house out. That's why some of y'all may have a copy with all three. Cause some did get streaked out, leaked out some, just a few. But we did stop pressing on that and cut that out for Jimmy for paying $500,000. My point to y'all, look who he was worrying about. Well, what about you, Dre? What about you, Snoop? That's death for one cut. The producers, that DVD was so hard. The niggas that, di that directed it, KC Amos beat your ass. He wouldn't even use his real name. That's John Amos' son. And my boy Rob Johnson. I looked on the back of that for the credits. I should have went on, took my credit, because I don't want to put everything together, me and Shug from jail. I should have went on, took credit for it. But Reg wasn't taking credit for nothing back then. But, yeah. You see those names? That's on the back of the DVD. Some Africans or some made up shit. Those niggas are so bitch and scared. Oh, two punk motherfuckers. But other than that, that's the story behind why some got with Jimmy's house in direction to his house, but majority of them that sold just had Snoops and Dre direction to their house. Uh, so that's the story behind. Jimmy I. Jean paying $500,000 to have his house removed from Death Row Uncut. Let Boom. me ask you about this. Um, usually when it comes down to Tupac documentaries and um, poetry things and, and you know, uh, workshops and things like that, there's always um, a girl that gets interviewed and it's Layla Steinberg. Huh. Who's like her, his first manager or something. She acts like uh, she was around in the death row time when, as far as uh, one documentary I saw, the Nick Bloomfield. Do you, have you ever met her or seen her or heard of her being around? I heard of her from documentaries. Never ever seen her before. But if Tupac was fucking with her, she would have been around, right? Have you seen any pictures with her since 93? What did Tupac say in his own words? I fired. What? What'd he say? Listen, y'all. Into Tupac, a young cat. I want to join the family, dog. Get me out. I want to join the family. Got me out. I'm out. I'm in the family. We make out. We did. We went through some sacred shit, me and this nigga. Uh -huh. Me and this nigga shit. We was, every day I did my album, he was there every day. Uh -huh. Every night we stayed up. We tossed it up together. We went out. We went to Mexico together. Went to Hawaii together. We went everywhere. You know what I mean? And thought about it. Oh, it, it veto all that. As soon as they charge you, even if you ain't do it, it veto your career. I started from scratch with Death Row, a new company. Not in, I was independent when I was Tupac. Mm -hmm. Me against the world, I just bought my old managers out. I had it all now. I re-signed to, to be a part of this. I fired everybody that was associated with me prior to uh, Death Row. Yeah. Tupac words, what he felt about everybody back then. So she helped Discovery, helped get him out there. She get her credit for that. But something happened when he fell out. When did Antron Gregory, Gregory take over? Um, That's my point. Sure. But I'm just saying all that to say he took over from her. And then she was gone. And then he got fired. I ain't never seen that man before in my life. He went around death row for those 11 months, neither one of them. Tupac told y'all, y'all just heard him. Fire him, fire them all.